Right now for you, as you observe, what's the greatest concern? So right now it is healthcare capacity. We are at that limit or, or arguably we've exceeded that limit. If we look back in the third wave of the virus, the most people we had ever put in the ICU for COVID was about 180. As of yesterday, we were past 220. So 40 more people in the ICU than we had previously ever experienced. And keep in mind that that previous high was after we had already brought in significant restrictions. So that was how far the ICUs went after restrictions were brought in. We have brought in some restrictions this week, some more kick in on Monday. And right now there is no sign that those ICU admissions are slowing over the next several weeks. No, indeed, we're talking, as I just was in introducing you, that Ontario, Manitoba, Newfoundland and Labrador, all perhaps coming to Alberta's assistance in handling ICU patients, maybe being transferred there, which is a very difficult thing to do. These are in very fragile states of health, these patients. But also, I thought rather extraordinarily, hospitals are being said, find any space available, operating rooms, recovery rooms, I mean, that, that really depicts how bad things are. Yes, yeah, so, and there's knock-on effects to that. So not only are we talking about putting people into the operating suite to actually treat them as an ICU unit, we lose that operating suite. Right now, we have cancelled in the Calgary zone and in the Edmonton zones nearly all possible scheduled surgeries. So we are still doing emergency surgeries. If there is a trauma or an accident, we can still treat those patients. But if you had a scheduled surgery, even for severe things such as uh, removing a brain tumor or pediatric surgeries to help kids walk again, those are being delayed. We simply do not have the space. And more critically, we simply do not have the staff. Those individuals that, that can treat patients are being redeployed, being pulled out of their normal units, being put into acute and critical care units to look after these patients. Uh, as pointed out by, by Dr. Wong, it is not the beds. We can put a ventilator beside another bed and, and treat patients, but typically an ICU unit has 15 to 20 people per bed in, in care. We simply don't have those trained resources to deploy to these surge beds. So given that as the backdrop, what do you think, what's your assessment of the measures as announced this week and whether you think they'll be effective in improving the situation? So I think the measures announced will be effective. They will slow the viral growth. They will reduce the number of infected people. The question is, are they enough? Will they act fast enough? And, and what we did not see is any form of a circuit breaker. And, and I'm not saying that that's the only option, but we do know that as restrictions come in, it will be two to three weeks before ICU admissions start to slow down. So we are in a crisis at the moment. And for example, restaurants, bars, they will have to participate in a proof of vaccine program as of Monday, but you know, yesterday, today, over the weekend, they're still able to operate with no restrictions. In contrast, as reported earlier, post-secondary institutions, so universities, even though at the University of Calgary, we have a proof of vaccine program, 91% of, of people are vaccinated, and those that are not do submit testing twice a week, we were instructed to immediately switch to online delivery. So there's a lot of discrepancy in these guidelines. There's a lot of exemptions, a lot of uh, different rules for different activities. Mm -hmm. And although overall it will have a, a positive impact, the question is, will it be enough in the immediate future to really avoid uh, getting to the level where we triage patients and determine who gets care and who doesn't. You raised something that I, I was planning on getting to with you, Professor Jenny, and that is this confusion in post-secondary institutions in the province, including yours, because with this announcement of proof of vaccination, as you said, being required, how will it apply in the university setting and how will, how will they prove it? So you've raised it. What are you hearing about it and how do you think it's likely to play out? Yeah, uh, we've been told that our program actually conforms with the what what we are refusing apparently in Alberta to call a, a vaccine passport, the uh, restriction exemption program as yes. opposed to vaccine passport. So apparently our program is already in compliance, but that was not good enough to remain in-person instruction this week. That may kick in on Monday, but uh, again, uh, at the University of Calgary, since the beginning of the semester, we have required students to attest a vaccine status. If they were not vaccinated, they were supplied with rapid testing for free, and they would have to submit two tests a week and update that every time they do a test. 
So we end on top of that all instruction, 100% of students are required to wear a mask at all times indoors on campus. So we are in compliance with those guidelines even before they were announced. And yet, you know, the confusion, the, the, the shifting goalpost required us to move online this week. And it appears as though we will be back to in-person instruction next week. But the school year barely but. underway. Who knows what is in store? Can I ask you one final thought? It was striking yesterday to hear Canada's top doctor, Dr. Theresa Tam, say, look to Alberta and Saskatchewan to a slightly lesser uh, extent as a lesson against complacency, watching another wave of crisis unfold. What would, what would your message be at this point to others, other provinces, other authorities watching the situation in your province? Yeah, I think, unfortunately, we are acting as an example of what not to do at the moment. Um, early in the pandemic, there were concerns from other provinces that the plan in Alberta was not a, a solid plan. And immediately there was pushback and basically uh, telling uh, Health Canada to mind their own business. And unfortunately, now at the end of the day, we're asking for help from other provinces. So I think it was very clear to others that this may not have worked. Um, and here we are now. I think the big lesson, though, is the virus, you know, is still in the community. We have to treat it with respect. But critically, if you start to see changes in case numbers, it is to act early. And Alberta right now, instead of having options on the table, has been forced into very extreme decisions. And these could have been avoided had lighter restrictions been brought in in August, for example. You've been living with it. You have been watching it as a scientist. So the perspective doubly valuable. Thanks, as always, for the time. You're welcome, Heather. Take care. Professor Craig Jenny joining us from Calgary this morning.